beer contest. Titled Twin Cube Proposals for Tether Supported Plasma Measurement 3U CubeSat by Mr. Thomas Shutuk from yes. Space Research Center, Polish Academy of Sciences. Yes. Please. Can you hear me? Yes, it's fine. Uh, good morning everyone, my name is Tomasz Szewczyk and together with the whole team I would like to thank for inviting us here. I will be talking about the, the idea of Tether supported plasma measurement 3 unit CubeSat. Uh, and the project is developed by people from Space Research Center and West Pomeranian University of Technology, both in Poland. So that's the outline of the presentation. I will start off with uh, diagnostics of plasma, then go through the technical description of the CubeSat, uh, explain the experiments we are trying to put on and, fin and finish up with the implementation plan challenges and feasibility. Okay, but first a small comment. Uh, as you all know, the Earth is uh, surrounded by ionized gas, uh, plasma, and uh, together with the magnetosphere and constant driving from the sun, it's quite complex uh, system. So uh, why do we care about it uh, from the practical point of view? Uh, because we want to forecast and model the system in order to better use our satellite infrastructure. So the investigation of space plasma can lead to, uh, for example, better, G uh, more reliable GPS position uh, improvement in communication satellite services and generally speaking uh, all the electronics that go to space uh, suffer from space weather uh, effects. So one of the ways to diagnose plasma is to passively measure the natural emissions occurring and from the, the frequencies we get we can determine the state of plasma and here you see an example of such a measurement, uh, which was done with high-frequency uh, analyzer instrument launched this year. So it was a single point measurement uh, in three axes, and uh, the picture you see is spectrogram from one axis. So we have time on the X uh, axis and uh, frequency on Y axis, and uh, the color of pixel is the magnitude of uh, at certain frequency. So what we see here are, for example, small scales uh, fluctuations and variations of uh, electron plasma frequency. But the problem with one-point measurements is that we know that something is going on, but we don't know, we don't know the, the evolution key of the process. So the idea is to uh, do multi-point measurements that uh, allows us to uh, investigate the, the phenomena both in time and in space. So uh, an example of such mission was cluster, and there is another mission proposed by Isaac named uh, Cross Scales. So what we want to do is we want to use uh, cube, uh, tethered CubeSats for multi-point measurements because first of all it would be quite cheap because we talk about CubeSats and then uh, the tether would maintain the formation flying and also uh, we would have possibility to uh, investigate new areas like for example lower parts of ionosphere uh, like uh, the, the QB50 mission. So now we can define the mission objectives of the uh, twin cube uh, project. So the first one is to perform two-point plasma measurements the second one is to sim uh, simulate and verify the dynamics of the two-body system connected by Tether. These are uh, scientific objectives. There is a technical objective and that is to develop a reliable Tether mechanism. Uh, as far as I know, this hasn't been done so far on CubeSat. Of course, there are additional objectives. And these are to, to introduce the students to philosophy of space projects and to develop an increased TRL of certain subsystems. So, uh, TwinCube will, uh, will be three unit CubeSat, dividable in space into two subsatellites connected by non-conductive tether. So both subsatellites will have all the necessary uh, subsystems to maintain uh, life. The, the bigger 
subsatellite will have S-band for faster downlink, and both subsatellite will have the uh, plasma experiment board. Uh, one you need, the, the bigger subsatellite will contain also the, the whole tether experiment with one kilometer non-conductive tether. If you take a brief look at the budgets, we see that uh, we fall under the f four kilograms uh, of mass uh, de uh, defined in CubeSat design specification. And if we take a look at the power budget, the then we see that considering the time sharing of certain subsystems, uh, the, the power budget is positive. So let's go through the nominal operational scenario. So first we get uh, deployed from the pipot and we detumble. Then we deploy antenna and once again uh, we will have to detumble the, the CubeSat because there will be quite a lot uh, of antennas. Then we give initial spin, uh, spin to the CubeSat and uh, use the lock and release mechanism to unlock both subsatellites. Then will be the long process of unwinding the tether to one kilometer length at, and at that point we can start our experiments. So first will be the, the plasma experiment and after that the tether experiment. Uh, it is assumed that since we are having one kilometer tether, uh, the, the lifetime of the satellite will be quite short. Uh, of course, there are certain risks involved in the project. We have uh, identified a few of those. So, for example, if the lock and release mechanism fails or we get only a few meters of tether, then we are still, uh, still able to perform one point measurement in two axes. If the tether breaks, then we, we have uh, two independent satellites performing single point measurements at, uh, at uh, unknown distance. And if one of the subsatellites fails, then we still uh, can perform, uh, we, we still can get some scientific data from the tether experiment and one point plasma measurement. Of course, there are other risks. So if we deploy one kilometer tether, then the collision risk uh, is quite high. So uh, we would avoid uh, SSO, the, the sun, syn sun synchronous orbit. And the chance of tangling the, the, the tether is quite high, I would say. So the stability of deployment is quite crucial. Now let's take a look at the experiments. So plasma experiment instrument will be placed, uh, will be based on the architecture that we already use in our analyzers. So we have the uh, E-field dipole antenna, the analog front end with a low pass filter, amplifier and ADC, and digital processing unit with FFT. Another crucial element of this experiment is uh, ultralight antenna uh, developed at our uh, institute. So uh, the idea is to have very compact and a light solution that will allow us to deploy one meter antenna without any kickoff, which is quite important for, for, for CubeSat. Uh, this uh, antenna has been tested and launched, so the, the TRL is quite high. Uh, now we have the tether experiment, so it will include the tether spool, motor inside, self-locking drive, uh, tether eyelet and kickoff spring to give uh, initial uh, deployment speed. Uh, this pool will contain one kilometer tether and we consider Dyneema wire because uh, we have good experience with that material. There is also lock and release mechanism. So what you see here is lock and release mechanism uh, developed for uh, PWSAT. The payload uh, was developed at our university. The CubeSat was developed by Warsaw University of Technology. So basically the idea is to burn the Dyneema wire with heat resistor uh, and uh, the strip spring will deploy, will bounce off and deploy the payload. There are two resistors, one backup, one uh, primary. So uh, we have performed simulations regarding the, the stability of the system, of the tethered system. 
So the set, uh, setup is the following, that we have orbit 1,400 by 300 kilometers, one kilometer tether and uh, subsatellite alignment par uh, parallel to orbit plane. This, uh, I, I think, is quite crucial. And the kickoff velocity is induced by springs. So what we see on the, on the figures, that uh, the first figure shows the distance between the subsatellite and the tension force. So what we see is that uh, after a few bounces, we get uh, to the stable one kilometer uh, distance. And we see also that uh, the tension force on tether is quite low, below two newtons. I'm not sure if you see this, but it's below uh, two newtons. The second figure shows the relative motion of the subsatellites. So we also see that the system starts to rotate. There are few bounces and we get stable uh, situation. And finally, we see the rotation angle of the constellation. So we see that apart from the uh, from the rotational motion, we get the pendulum-like motion induced by, gra uh, by gravitational gradient. So the, the mission is planned for four years, uh, three years of, the, uh, of development and one year uh, in orbit phase. Uh, all the reviews are fit into the plan. Uh, then uh, we have uh, all the infrastructure needed to develop the, the instruments, so clean room, mechani mechanical workshop, and so on. And we have also access to ground station in uh, UHF, VHF, and S-band. So uh, in terms of technical feasibility, uh, we, we uh, have quite, quite uh, nice experience in the technical aspects of this project. So uh, for example, the ultralight an uh, antenna has uh, high TRL. We have good experience with lock and release mechanisms and the simulations of uh, dynamics. And then the full size analyzers are uh, already space borne and working quite well. Of course, we are aware of the technical challenges which are important for mission outcome. So uh, the tether mechanism is uh, quite crucial for this. Uh, and then the, the simulation and control of the tether system will also be crucial not to, not to tangle the CubeSats and to deploy them to into one kilometer distance. Uh, m moreover, the miniaturization of all the subsystem will also be uh, quite challenging. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Shunituk. Just one quick question about the, the Dyneema um, compatibility in, in space. Have you guys looked at um, outgassing and degradation in, in uh, the space environment, charging? I all was that talking about stuff. it with my colleagues like a week ago. Generally uh, speaking, we use it. Uh, it's working fine, but there is some uh, concern in ESA that it. There are some slight problems, but I think it's it's stable. Gen generally speaking, some of the plastics have issues with UV degradation and static charging. And I think this things. one doesn't have any problems, as far okay. as I know. Okay, so I have uh, two questions. The first question is that uh, you fix the length, uh, tether length at the one kilometer, but uh, uh, from the point of view of the scientific observation, it, isn't it better to change the distance uh, of the two uh, you know, sensors? Uh, okay, for the dynamics of this, uh, for the dynamics of the system, we plan to, to change the, the length just to see how it will uh, behave. But for the uh, plasma experiment, uh, actually one kilometer is very, very low scale. So uh, it would be better to get a few kilometers more. Mm -hmm. But uh, still one kilometer is, is enough to get some small scale measurements. Okay. Uh, sorry, I forgot the second question. <laughs> I will give you later. Okay, okay. so please. I've got one question. You're going to stabilize the satellites before deployment by spinning using magnetics. 
So you spin the satellites, the yes. two satellites. Then you separate. How are you going to prevent your tether from being wind up or twisted? Uh, because the two will, yes, as yeah. soon as you separate, they will start spinning at a different rate. And even if you control the rate over time, uh, you will start to wind up your tether. How are you going to prevent that? Okay, so the idea is to first give the initial spin and then slowly deploy it. So, uh, to so we want to keep the tether uh, stiff, uh, let's say. Yeah, but the two satellites will spin at a different rate as soon as they separate it. They will not spin exactly at the same rate. Yes, but uh, if we do it slowly enough, then I be uh, then uh, we believe that the gravitational gradient and and the, the initial spin will be enough. Of, uh, of, of course, the tangling is a problem here, but we believe that we will manage. Yeah, I'm not sure that you understand my question. If you separate and the satellites yeah. as a whole were spinning at exactly the same rate, as soon as you separate, the spin rates will become different between the two satellites. Yes, but if so we then you wind up your, your tether. But if we maintain the, the tether stiff, then the then the system will spin around the center of of tether more or less i, I believe yeah okay we can talk later about okay. thank you yeah a couple of questions are around the dynamics of your system and my my question is also related to that uh, what what you are doing with the two point measurement is determine the gradient of the plasma, yeah, yeah, and the gradient is basically a vector having a magnitude and a direction. Yes. So, if we assume that the system is somehow dynamic, the direction is also dynamic. Yes. How do you deal with, uh, I mean, this, this gradient and the two two components? How to separate it and how to determine the the two two, two components? Well, the ADCS, the determination of the cube. Uh, yeah, the determination of the CubeSats will be crucial to know the the direction they are facing, generally speaking. So that's the idea. Yeah, yeah but you can't control it. You cannot uh, determine what is the actual measurement situation. With uh, ADCS, if you get enough uh, enough precision uh, from the sensor, then I believe, yeah, we can determine more or less the the configuration of the sub-satellites. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, uh, my question is, uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, the tether and the antenna. Antenna is a hoip antenna? It's tubular boom antenna. Antenna, antenna. Yeah. yeah tubular boom antenna. So, uh -huh. it's and yeah. it, so, the tether and the antenna may not be, you know, tangled or some interaction and the maybe the antenna should be straight in order to uh, get a good communication performance but uh, it may be bended because of the tether or uh, that kind of things doesn't happen that kind of thing does not happen or it will happen I mean the tangling is the issue and uh, we are planning to use tubular boom antennas which are stiff generally speaking after the deployment so uh, that's one of the problems we will face, but I believe that the stability of deployment will, will allow us to get stable situation. Okay, thank you very much. You. So now, the nine, all the nine presentation has presented in this morning. So again, we would like to express our gratitude for all the presenters. So thank you very much for presenting us. <laughs> <laughs>